Hey guys, so today we're gonna to be creating some op art spheres and some cool optical illusion backgrounds. So the spheres are all gonna have the same step, but the backgrounds are kind of gonna be your choice. So I have two different versions of how we can kind of create some different backgrounds. So I'm gonna be showing both, but first, we are going to start with the spheres. So to create a perfect circle, I suggest that you guys find something that you can trace at home to create a circle. Now we don't want our circle super small. So I would find something like a cup or a glass or a mug, something that is going to create that perfect circle. Cause if we're trying to draw a circle by hand, it's going to end up a little wonky and we want our circles to be kind of precise. So I'm going to have my, white piece of paper here and I'm going to have my glass. Now the cool thing about using like a cup or a glass like this is that you actually have two circles with it. So I have the open side here, which is going to create a bigger circle. And then if I flipped it and I trace this side, it's going to create a smaller circle. So I'm going to use this. Now, the first thing I need to do is also figure out how many circles do I want to make. So I like choosing three just because it kind of makes for an interesting um, kind of just different along our paper. Uh, if you have two, that's probably not enough. If you've got one, definitely not enough. Um, and then you don't want too many because then it might look a little too crazy. So three is really kind of like a good, easy number. So I'm going to start by making a nice big circle. So my cup is flipped over. I'm going to take a pencil to trace. So there's one circle. Then I'm going to kind of put another one over here further away. I don't want them too close together. So I'm going to do another bigger one. And then I'm going to flip my cup over so that I can trace the bottom to make a smaller circle. And then that one's going to kind of go up at the top. So they're all kind of nicely spaced away from each other. All right, so now that I have my circles drawn, I need to start to create this checkered illusion on the circles. And what that's gonna do is it's going to give the illusion that it is curved. So it's, instead of a circle, which is our flat 2D shape, it's gonna make it look like a sphere where it is gonna be rounded. It's gonna make it look more like a 3D shape. And that's part of the optical illusion is we really want to make this look like it's 3D. So the steps to doing this are very simple. I know it looks a little bit difficult, but I promise it's pretty easy. So I'm gonna start with my circle down here first. And in the center of my circle, as in the middle as I can, I am going to create a curved line going to the left side, okay? So when I say curve, think of it again as like a smiley face curve just to the side. So I'm gonna make one kind of coming down. So going to the left side, and then I'll make another one that is gonna curve to the right side. So it's gonna be the opposite. And I'm gonna make them kind of touch in the center. So it's gonna look like this big kind of um, almond shape. Then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna create some more curves going to the right side and some more going to the left. So obviously this side is curving going this way. So I'm just gonna take it and I'm gonna add another curve. And I can add either one or two more lines. For this one, I'm just gonna add one more. I'm not gonna add too many. And then I'm gonna do the same thing on the opposite side. So it's making it, it curve the direction that, um, or the side of the circle that it is on. Then what I'm gonna do is I'm going to turn my paper so that I'm looking at the other side of the circle here. And I'm gonna repeat those same steps. So I'm kind of in the middle. I'm gonna create that kind of almond or lemon shape. And then I'm gonna add the extra curve. So you can see it's kind of crisscrossing over, which is gonna make this kind of curved checkerboard. So let me show that again. So I'm gonna start in the center, curving to the left, curve to the right, right curve and left curve. Turn it, so now I'm facing the other direction on that circle here. I'm gonna repeat the same steps. OK, 
Okay. And then same thing for the little one. Okay, so now that I have all of those kind of checkerboard lines drawn, now I wanna go ahead and outline and then start to color. So a lot of times when we look at optical illusion art, we use black and white um, as very basic, basic colors. Now, if you want to do black and white, that is fine. If you want to do um, another color instead of black, you can do that as well. That is kind of up to you and your choice. So for this one, I did purple. For this one, I did black and white. Again, your choice. So then, as I said, we're gonna go ahead and outline. So any lines that I have made, I'm going to go ahead and color. You can use marker or crayon for this part. Okay, now that I'm done outlining, I also wanna go back in with my eraser and make sure I get any of those extra pencil lines that I don't want showing um, gone. All right, now once those pencil lines are gone, now I wanna go ahead and color in my checkerboard. Now a checkerboard pattern goes in an A, B pattern. So it's going to be um, black, white, black, white, black, white, or again, whatever color you have chosen. So if you've chosen to do a color instead of black, um, it is gonna be color white, color white, color white. Um, so I like to go one row at a time as I color. I just think that makes it a little easier um, to keep track of the pattern because sometimes when you're doing checkerboard, you might get a little mixed up. The other thing that you can do is if you want to pre-mark it with the color that's gonna be colored in, you can do that too if that helps you kind of keep track. So if like I wanted to make like a little dot in the ones that I know are going to be colored in, I can go ahead and do that. Okay, so once you are done coloring your spheres, now what we're gonna do is create the background. And I said there's a couple different ways we can do our backgrounds, but the steps are gonna start off the same. So we've got this one that again, it kind of looks like all of our lines are kind of going into the center, um, like it's kind of going down this long tunnel. Um, then we have this cool one, which again, it kind of, again, looks like it's going into the center, but this one is kind of curving and waving and moving a little differently. Um, so I'm gonna show you how to create those, or at least the first parts um, to each of those, because they are gonna start off very similar. So the first thing that I'm gonna do with my ruler is I am going to line it up from each edge of the paper and I'm going to draw my line. Now, if I'm running into one of my spheres, I need to stop, jump over, and then start that line because I don't want to draw through my sphere because then we're going to have to erase all those pencil lines and we don't want to go through all that. Then I'm going to line it up the opposite way from corner to corner. Again, jumping over any spheres that I'm running into to make that line. Then in that center, that's where what we have our vanishing point. That's our last point where our eyes can see. I'm going to go ahead and draw a straight line, a vertical line up and down. Then I'm going to do a horizontal line. Making sure all those lines are meeting in that middle. All right, so then there are my lines. Again, you can choose how you're gonna do your background, whether you want to um, do this technique where you are coloring every other um, line. So again, kind of going in that AB pattern where we have one section that is going to be colored in fully black. Um, and then we're going to use crayon in the other section to do like a color. You can do that. Um, or you can choose to create our wavy background. Now I did a tutorial already. Um, 
which is my other video about op art and how to create this pattern where we have our triangles, but then we're using some lines to create some checkerboard lines where some are going um, down and then some lines are going up so that um, some of the cones look like they're out and some look like they're down. So you can watch that if this is the type of background you are wanting to make for it. And then also kind of that shading technique um, that I used in that video where it is darker on the side and then as it goes in towards the center, it gets lighter um, to kind of create again a little bit more to that depth um, and 3D-ness of our shapes. So for my demo here, I'm gonna show how we create this background. And I'm actually gonna go ahead and add a couple more lines just to make them a little bit smaller. So where I have these really big sections here, I'm just gonna add my ruler in and just add another little line right down through the bottom. Make them just a teeny bit smaller. There we go. Perfect. So it just adds a little bit more. So I have um, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve sections. So I have twelve of those sections. Um, so again, half of those sections, I'm just going to use a plain black color to color those in. So again, thinking of every other one. If I want to mark it to make sure that I am coloring the right one. I'm gonna go ahead and do that so I don't accidentally get it mixed up. So six of those are gonna be black and then the other six are gonna be those colors. All right, so now that I have those colored in black, now I'm gonna decide what I want to do for my other sections. So a couple different things. If you wanted to keep it really simple and just use one plain color for that background, you could totally do that. Um, I like to do a little bit of shading so where my color is a little bit darker on the inside and as I go out, I get a little bit lighter. It's just going to, again, give that illusion of depth um, by having that little bit of color change. So for this one, I'm gonna be using some crayons. So I think today I'm gonna use some blue. Um, so I have picked about three colors of blue. You don't have to pick that many. You could pick one or you could pick two. Um, but again, we're gonna change our color by just how hard we press down on the color um, and then lighten our pressure as we go up. So I'm gonna start with my darkest one in the center. So this is like a really dark um, kind of midnight blue. And I'm gonna start putting that in the center and then bringing it out just a little bit. So as I'm bringing it out, I'm just pressing down a little bit lighter with my hand. So darker in the center, lighter as I go out towards the sides. Then I'm gonna switch to a medium blue and I'm gonna overlap that color with the first color that I was using here. There you go. And again, I'm kind of using a little bit more pressure where it's blending with that first color I was using and then getting lighter. And lighter, and then I'm actually gonna switch to an even lighter blue. Overlap that just a little bit. And then really light pressure towards the outside. So I'm not really pressing down very hard at all. All right, so it kind of gives it that color change so where it's darker and then as it goes out, it gets a little bit lighter. So I'm gonna do that in each of the sections as I go around. As I said, that's kind of optional. If you want to try this, it's a really cool effect. Or if you just wanna do one color um, just plain for your um, other triangles, that is fine too. It is your artwork. All right, guys, so once you are done coloring, you are done and you have created your op art spheres. So I hope you enjoy 